around eight months ago, I started talking about this thing called EMA, e-commerce marketing agencies. Now, I didn't know how the market was going to respond to it. Uh, to be honest, I wasn't really looking for a response from the market. It was honestly just a way for me to share the excitement uh, about this new way of doing SMMA, this new model of SMMA. And the reason why I wanted to do that is for two plus years, I've been doing SMMA, right? I started off with a traditional SMMA and I was, uh, you know, I got it to a point where I was making five, six, seven K a month, but I was pretty dissatisfied for a number of reasons. And it was only when I made the transition to the e-commerce space, when I built my e-commerce marketing agency, Mogul C, which is now rebranding to a whole new thing, which I'll tell you guys about in upcoming videos. It was only when I made that transition that I became super passionate about the SMMA model. But not only did I find something that made me a lot more passionate, but I also found something that financially made a lot more sense, where I could make a lot more money, grow my agency way faster. And all in all, making that transition was one of the best decisions I've made so far as an entrepreneur. So I didn't really know what to expect when I coined the EMA uh, term especially because it's not SMMA uh, and there's a lot of hype about SMMA but the market seemed to resonate with it and you guys uh, seem to uh, really be passionate about the EMA model you understood its value and I saw a lot of people DMing me commenting on my videos telling me hey look this makes a lot more sense right this makes so much more sense than the traditional SMMA model I want to get into this right and so since that first instance that I talked about the EMA model a lot has changed and going into 2021 I'm even more excited because these are the new wave of agency owners Agency owners that actually care about results for clients. Agency owners that are growing brands online to fierce profitable levels. I'm also talking about agency owners that can scale their agency so much faster with performance driven incentives. The whole playing field has changed. And if you're running an EMA, then this video is going to be insanely valuable to understand what's coming for 2021 and to understand why you're probably in the right lane. And if you haven't started your EMA, then this video will show you why you might want to consider it uh, instead of going down the traditional SMMA route. So I'm super excited for this video. And without further ado, Let's hop on my computer for a step-by-step -step training. You guys know how I like to roll with this channel. So we've got another step-by-step -step training. And so without further ado, let's hop on my computer. All right, all right. So EMA, the future of SMMA in 2021. Now, in this presentation, I will cover the difference between the traditional SMMA model and the new wave of high-performing agency owners that I just talked about. Scaling e-commerce brands to fiercely profitable levels. So here's what we're going to be covering. First things first is outreach the world economy concept and the moving with the times. Service delivery, dine on your own sword and the sustainability paradox. And finally, we've got lifestyle. Fueling your lifestyle while scaling e uh, businesses to fierce profitability. Now, first things first is outreach. Here's what you need to know about EMA. Right? And it's that the, the worldwide economy concept. With EMA, which is e-commerce marketing agencies, we are helping e-commerce brands. Now, one of the great things about that sector is that there are no geographical limitations and e-commerce business owners are completely fine with that because uh, that's how they operate their business too, right? They're completely fine, um, you know, working with people abroad, right? They're completely used to it by now because that's how they do business. They're, they're, the nature of their business is really important to understand the nature of your uh, sectors, your niches business, right? They're completely fine and completely used to working with people abroad from different countries, whether it's, you know, whether it's US, UK, Spain, the Philippines, right? They're completely fine and used to that. The second thing is outreach is actually way more effective because the uh, common outreach methods that people use are way more effective on e-commerce clients due to the nature of their business. Again, the nature of their business is incredibly important. Understanding uh, where they're currently hanging out is incredibly vital to then make sure that you get in front of them on the right platform, right? So these business owners are mainly hanging out online. And that is why social media messaging, emails, LinkedIn, Loom videos, right? They land way better because they spend their time online. Whereas, and, and we'll look at uh, the traditional SME model, which is mostly uh, local businesses, right? Local business owners are running around you know, in the restaurant or the dentist, whatever it is, right? Most local business owners haven't removed themselves from the operations. And so they're running around constantly, you know, the whole day, right? And so it's very hard for them to stop, you know, uh, look at uh, social media or look at your LinkedIn messages or look at email. Um, maybe a phone call could do it. But even then, right, you're a bit of a nuance, right? Because they are getting uh, along with their day and now they've got your cold call to answer. So instead, e-commerce owners are hanging out on social media. They're hanging out on LinkedIn, right? They're operating their business online. They've managed to remove themselves from the equation way more than a local business owner, right? A local business owner, in many cases, right? They've made their business their job. Whereas for e-commerce, it lends itself to building better systems, better a team structure, better team dynamic. 
And that is one of the great things about uh, e-commerce. The fact that is that these people are hanging out online. Thus, you have more deliverability, which is massive for outreach. And the, and the final thing is they're used to it. The vast majority of e-commerce owners have hired someone online without ever meeting them. VAs, agencies, team members, uh, most of our team will operate online too. And I'm actually coming out with my own e-commerce brand later this year. I'll tell you guys maybe a later down the line what that will be. Um, but I'm hiring for that team right now. Obviously, I've got my core agency team, but I'm also hiring from around the world, right? And I'm not meeting these people. It's never, you know, for me, most of my team members, I haven't met them physically, right? Um, it's something that I want to do this year. In fact, I got my CTO to move in with me for the agency. In fact, I'm flying out uh, other team members like my video editor, right? So I'm definitely, I wanted to meet them more in person, but for the most part, I've never really met them in person, right? And so they're completely fine with that. They're completely used to it by now. Whereas local business owners, right? they typically require that one-to-one face-to-face -to -face interaction because that's what they're used to, right? What I found is that for them, that is often a requisite to build rapport. Um, and so, you know, clearly that, that that's going to lead to geographical limitations if you, you know, if, if a lot of them have that resistance of hiring someone who they've never met. On the flip side, and, and we've kind of, uh, you know, touched on this, but due to the physical nature of their business, local business owners, um, they expect that human touch, right? As in many cases, you're limited by location. They expect you to meet them. They expect to see your face. And so that actually makes the geographical boundaries way tighter, right? And finally, most of their team have a physical presence. So they work with each other every single day. You know, you got to understand that most of these people are working in an office together, right? Or maybe they're working at the gym together or, or you know, at the same dentist. We've got the receptionist and then we've got the main doctor and then we've got, you know, the apprentice. And so they're working with each other every single day and they expect that one-to-one -one, face to face uh, interaction. And so there's bigger shock factor when hiring someone to do the job externally and especially who you've never met physically, right? The final thing, you know, when it comes to outreach is moving with the times, okay? Obviously, you probably know by now that 2020 was a bit of a weird year for a number of pretty obvious reasons. And, um, you know, that had a lot of impact on a lot of local businesses in a very negative way, unfortunately. But on the flip side, it had a very positive effect on e-commerce businesses. So the current social landscape has had a massive influence on the growth of e-commerce. As millions stayed home, global e-commerce traffic hit a record-breaking 22 billion monthly visits in June 2020, according to Statista.com. That is massive, okay? We're talking about 22 billion monthly visits in June 2020. That's never been seen before, okay? Um, not only that, but e-commerce has almost doubled the market cap in the past year and has grown more than in the past 10 years combined. And here, you know, I left here a few examples of, of some of the, the you know, big companies um, that experience this huge growth in their already existing e-commerce side to their business. So Adidas, for example, nearly doubles e-com sales in challenging second quarter. Right. Written 6th of August, uh, 2020. Walmart's e-commerce sales uh, nearly double as shoppers go beyond groceries in online orders. Superdry, for example, right? So apparel and fashion. I'm giving you guys, uh, you know, different niches, right? We've got fitness. We've got a bit of a conglomerate like Walmart. We've got Superdry, right? Superdry doubles its e-commerce revenue during crisis. Okay? So massive brands already have experienced insane growth and also it's been an amazing opportunity for newcomers, right? And so from beginner brands looking to uh, get a land grab of the booming e-commerce uh, space and the way society is transitioning to e-commerce, to physical stores and services going online. For example, you know, we've got educators, right? Who have education centers. For example, a few days ago, uh, I got reached out by a um, uh, an educator and he's got like 2 million uh, followers on, on TikTok. And, you know, he's, a, he's an amazing teacher, but most of his lessons were physical, right? So people would go to uh, his center, right? and they will learn from him. And now he's been forced to create an online course. He's, he's been forced to uh, take his teachers online to impact even more people, right? And so it's an amazing opportunity uh, for him, but it's also an amazing opportunity for other institutions that were primarily physical, but now they have to realize that they have to adapt, right? To keep growing and also take advantage of this massive opportunity. They have to go online. They have to make use of e-commerce growth. They have to sell online. So not only services, but also retail stores, right? I know so many massive brands, even clients of ours, right? They're massive when it comes to retail and they are in Sephora, they are in um, you know Whole Foods and they're making millions a month on that side of their business, right? But when it comes to their e-commerce sales, it's really lacking, right? And so they realize that they have to really uh, hone in on their e-commerce side of their business just to be ready for the uncertainty, right? So we've got those type of brands and we've also got big brands going even harder than ever with their e-commerce growth, right? And so we've got massive e-commerce brands realizing that they have to go even harder, right? They have to have a, a better return on, on their ads, right? 
They have to have email marketing on board, chatbot creation, SMS marketing, right? They have to really go hard on their e-commerce because um, so far, you know, it's, it's, it's been good for them maybe, but now there's increased competition and there's also more demand for products like theirs, right? And so they need to make sure they make the most out of the situation, but also make sure that they don't get overtaken by a possible competitor, right? And so that is moving with the times and understanding that there's never been more demand for e-commerce growth. All these brands are looking for e-commerce growth and that's what we come in with our irresistible offer through our outreach. So that is a bit about outreach now onto the service delivery portion of this training. When it comes to e-commerce, um, the return is very clear. And that's one of the things that I, you know, that made me move away from the traditional local business SME model to the EMA model. I wanted to die on my own sword, which I'll talk about in just a bit, right? But the main KPI, the, the key performance indicator that we're optimizing for is a purchase, right? Purchase conversion value. That is the sole thing that we care about. For example, here, you've got a little example uh, on the screen. We've got website purchase conversion value, right? It comes out to, uh, to be 40,000 pounds, okay? Very, very clear. There's no question as to how much a lead is really worth, uh, the cost per lead, whether they were able to close this lead, right? Which is what we're doing for local businesses. We're optimizing for leads, which I'll talk about in just a bit, right? Um, so the main KPI is purchase conversion value. And it's very clear how much money we've made them. The great thing about this is that it's much more sustainable, right? Especially in times of crisis, what business owners do is they take a look at their balance sheet and they go, okay, this makes me money, this doesn't. This makes me money, this doesn't. I'm going to leave the stuff that's, that makes me money and probably uh, go harder on it, right? But I'm probably going to cut the things that are not making me money directly. And so when it comes to e-commerce growth, right, our value is very clear. Whether it's email marketing with, you know, platforms like Klaviyo, where there's a dollar sign attached to every email campaign and flow that you launch, okay? as well as Facebook ads, Google ads, SEO even, right? So our value is very clear and it makes it most, much more sustainable because any sane business owner is never going to cut you off as long as you're making the money, right? Uh, any same business owner will never do that. And so, you know, that, that, that's one of the reasons why I haven't lost one single client during the very tough 2020 period, right? And I've got a 40 month retention rate because as long as we're making our clients money, which we're pretty good at my, uh, at my agency, they're not going to cut us off. That is the, uh, the first thing. The second thing is dying on your own sword. So if you get them incredible results, you're responsible. If you get them poor results, you're responsible, okay? That gives you immense power and it helps me sleep at night, right? Because I love being in full control of my destiny, right? Uh, one of the things that I live by is extreme ownership, making sure that you uh, take accountability for the things that happen to you, whether they're bad, whether they're good, right? But I, I want to be in control of my value. And so, you know, when, when I was doing local business, I never felt like I was in control of my value. I felt like, uh, you know, I felt like I had a boss and I was the, the employee and I was constantly trying to please the boss. But since I didn't have the numbers, right? I, I didn't have the data it was very hard to, to have a, a logical conversation, right? And so don't let that scare you off. Make that your superpower. Make it your superpower because as long as you have an incredible team, as long as you have an incredible process to results, which should definitely be one of your focus. And it's one of the reasons why I've made it such a, a crucial part of what I do with my agency on a daily basis, as well as with my mentorship. So make it a superpower. And the final thing is vital to success. So for most e-commerce businesses, their main source of traffic and customers will be online advertising. There's no way around it, right? And um, not doing it comes at a very large cost to the growth of their business. And so if they don't get this stuff right, how are they going to grow their business? If they don't understand growth hacks, if they don't have traffic sources, if they cannot get eyeballs on their incredible product, I'm sorry, but they're just not going to grow, right? You could have an incredible product, but e-commerce, unfortunately, is not built it and they will come, right? It's built an incredible product. Make sure that you can drive traffic to it. Make sure that you have a way to uh, get in front of your dream customers, right? Not only that, but they're constantly seeing other e-commerce brands build empires on the back of social media marketing, right? They're seeing brands like Gymshark, like Kylie Cosmetics, like Drunk Elephant selling for 800 million, right? They're, you know, SoundCloud. They're seeing this seemingly small brands at first, right? With very little upfront capital get massive just on the back of social media marketing of things like Facebook ads, Google ads, or being able to master email marketing or growth hacks, right? There's a massive opportunity. And the great thing is they've got proof of concept. But even going further, this gets me even more excited um, because a lot of people might see the e-commerce opportunity and they might think, well, why not build an e-commerce brand, right? Like surely, why not do it, right? Um, you know, clearly it's, it's a booming market. Why then do EMA? Why, why not just do an e-commerce brand, right? Uh, straight out the bat or drop shipping. I want you to imagine this for a second, right? Here we've got a semi-successful Shopify store making you, you know, 10K per month, right? Which is not easy, by the way. Most people will never even hit that mark. Most people will never even make their first sale. So keep that in mind, right? 
Now we've got a lot of expenses and moving parts, right? So you have to pay for the product, you have to pay for the marketing, you have to pay for the branding, and maybe the website. We've got a lot of expenses up front, okay? And we haven't made much money yet. Um, and we've also got a lot of moving parts, right? For, you know, to, to get this brand to 10K or 20K or 30K, right? You need to master a bunch of different things. You need to ma master uh, product research, right? Uh, product development, branding, marketing, right? Website development, um, logistics, and a bunch of other complex business aspects, right? The, 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 the funny thing is you're taking home 3K a, a month profit. Okay, so we've got a 30, you know, it, it, let's just say you've got a 40% profit margin. Max, you're taking home 4K per month, right? Profit. Now imagine this, and this will really open your eyes to the power of EMA, right? But before we do that, uh, if you're enjoying this training, I almost forgot that this was coming up. Uh, but, you know, if you're an OG, you probably uh, you probably knew this was going to come up at some point. But if you're enjoying this training, go ahead and drop a massive thumbs up. Hops up down with the algorithm. YouTube just finds it extremely sexy when uh, you make that little thing uh, turn blue. So uh, I'd really appreciate it. And with that being said, let's let's go back into the video. So imagine this, right? You've got one Shopify store. You've got two. You've got three. You've got four. You've got five. You've got six, seven, eight, nine, right? These are all the Shopify brands, all the e-commerce brands that are looking to make more money, right? They're looking to grow faster. They're looking to grow more profitably, right? And you've got the key. You only focus on that one single thing. You only focus on that one single aspect of their business, which is growth, right? Which is marketing. You're not, you don't have to, you know, find their product, right? Ironically, we've got the same product, uh, but it could have been, uh, it could have been fun to, uh, to add different products, but essentially you haven't had to find their own product, right? You haven't had to put their website together. You haven't had to put their branding together yet. They're coming to you for one single thing. So you can just focus on that one single thing, become the best at it in your specific sub uh, niche within the e-commerce space, right? And now all you have to do is offer one solution to them, which is e-commerce growth, right? And so you go on to sign one successful Shopify store, not 10K a month, right? Uh, but one successful Shopify store, semi-successful, making 190K per month uh, in revenue, and they need digital marketing. Maybe uh, they've built purely just a, an organic audience uh, that goes crazy for their product. They've got an amazing product, but they haven't turbocharged that with paid ads, with like, for example, uh, Facebook ads, right? We've got another Shopify store making 80K per month, not yours, right? Someone who you've offered value to when reaching out to them, right? And they realize that you are the person to grow their e-commerce store to the next level. Again, they need digital marketing. And we've got a third one making 230K per month needs digital marketing. The first one, you charge 2,600, right? Which is not a massive figure in the e-commerce space, especially because, you know, I could talk about this for ages. It's a bit more advanced content, but our pricing usually involves performance-driven incentives, right? And so we could make upwards of, you know, 4,200. And the great thing is our income grows with the, uh, with the business, okay? Then the second one, you charge 2,100. Again, not a massive figure, right? But I'm playing it safe here. And the third one, you charge 3,700 for. Now, if you add all this stuff, right, now you're making $8,400 per month. You're in the six-figure reach. Profit, that is, approximately. Obviously, you have uh, maybe a, a contractor, a media buyer, and you've got softwares, but you know, hopefully you can see that you haven't had to build this incredibly complex uh, structure, this incredibly complex uh, e-commerce brand to make this amount, and you're just offering one solution, and you've got maybe three stores, right? Three Shopify brands that are paying you money, and you're already making six figures land four clients or land more high value clients there you go right that's how you get to 10k a month in record breaking time now when it comes to local business the return is not very clear so the kpi that we're optimizing for is leads leads does not equal money and if you want to know what a lead is uh, i recommend you check out this video that i put out a few days ago but there can be a value attached to a lead and where i show you in that, in that video i show you that you can watch after this video i show you how to calculate this value um but the sale is not under your control so many local business agencies run into the problem down below right which is the problem that i run into okay um which is the leads are weak right so so the, your client tells you hey look the, the leads are weak right and it's your fault whereas maybe you brought them incredible leads qualified leads at a cost per lead which is amazing for them right but they're blaming the fact that they cannot close these leads on you Right? The final thing is they can get away without it. So the reality is it's not as essential for local businesses to implement online advertising, especially now in, you know, in the current social landscape where most local businesses are not at 100% capacity, so they don't really need more leads. But there's a lot of ways that they can get traffic. It's not like online where you have to do online advertising, right? Um, there's, there's a bunch of ways, like, for example, street traffic, uh, elimination, right? For example, I need to go to a gym. I don't have many gyms close to my home, so this is the gym that I'm going to go to, right? Uh, that, that, you know, that, that's what I mean by elimination. And then geographical limitations, et cetera, et cetera, right? Um, 
So that is a local business when it comes to service delivery. And the final thing that I want to talk, uh, talk about is lifestyle. E-commerce fuels my lifestyle. And that, that is why I'm, I'm extremely passionate about it. Um, not only fuels my lifestyle, but it fuels my ambition and, and what I actually like, which is building really cool shit, okay? Uh, and so first things first is it gives me location freedom. The fact that I can reach out to any business uh, that interests me, no matter where they're located, and without having to meet with them physically, I can work from anywhere in the world, right? I can reach out to them anywhere in the world, right? So, I, you know, if I like a, a business and, and they're based out in Germany, I'll reach out to them, no problem, right? Um, and so that, that's one of the great things about uh, e-commerce, right? The second thing is it lends itself to higher retainers. And I, I briefly talked about it, but you know, you can charge performance-driven incentives that actually make you more money than the base fee, which is what my agency does. We make a lot more money on the performance-driven incentives. And the great thing about that is that that grows every single month, okay? So the more money that, that we make our clients, the more money we make, right? The fact that on average, e-com businesses tend to have healthier profit margins, around 40, 50%, right? which allows them to invest more into revenue generating activities like online advertising. And that is massive, right? When it comes to local businesses and, you know, some of them are literally taking 1% profit, um, you know, max 10% because they've got so many expenses to pay for. They're obviously going to think about uh, investing into another thing, right? Because they've got so many expenses, you know, we've got electricity bills and, you know, um, staff and, uh, you know, the, the actual physical location, the rent and a bunch of other, uh, you know, really high expenses. Third thing is referrals are made easy. People congregate online. E-commerce business owners tend to have uh, many contacts and e-friends in the same space that they're happy to refer us to. That is also one of the reasons why my agency has grown pretty fast. That is also one of the reasons why I've never had to, for example, you know, on, on my coaching side of, of my business, right? Um, which I don't really focus on too much. I've got my agency as my business and, you know, it pays for the bills and much more. Um, so I do that more of a, as a passion, right? And so I've never had to reach out to anyone. Uh, for my coaching services yet. It's also the reason why, for example, for my mentorship, I've got a three week wait for an application, right? And the reason why that is, is because communities congregate online nowadays and also word of mouth travels way faster online. And the final thing is passion, which is a word that that, that is thrown around a bunch, right? But my passion is building and growing brands online. I literally get to work alongside established entrepreneurs, right? And at my agency, we are an integral part of their business growth, which I absolutely love because when you're working with a dentist or a restaurant, they have a cap, right? Like you cannot grow their business to a million a month or hundred K a month, right? You can fill their, their full capacity, but there's a cap. When it comes to e-commerce businesses, we can literally 10 X their business, scale it to eight figures, right? Which I absolutely love and there's no cap. Um, and also, you know, I get to, for example, I'll show you guys. Right there, but my CTO just ran away. Um, and so right there, we've got my CTO just grinding away, building a, a new dashboard. Um, and you know, obviously he can't hear a word because he's got his, uh, his noise canceling headphones, but I absolutely love building a, a team, right? Uh, and feeling like we're an integral part of their growth. And the fact that when we grow them, we grow as well as an agency. With local businesses, you don't feel the same sense of involvement and passion. So my friends, that is that for uh, this presentation. W wait, w what's this? What's happening? Oh, it's a like button that's not blue. In all seriousness, if, you, uh, if you've enjoyed this video, if you've gotten to this point of the video, it probably means that you found uh, something of value out of it. So I'd really appreciate if you made that gray looking ugly like button turn blue. You know, it's, it's, it's much better. It just looks better. So that is that for this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you don't want to miss any of my upcoming trainings, honestly, you've got just an insane amount of incredible step-by-step -step trainings that, that most people would actually charge for with less content. Um, so if you don't want to miss any of that, uh, go ahead and sub to my channel, hit the little bell icon so you never miss one of these step-by-step -step trainings because some of the trainings I'm actually taking down is never intended for the masses. Uh, it's intended for the number of people who are driven, who are uh, hungry, who are ambitious. So if you don't want to miss these trainings when they drop, go ahead and sub to my channel. And if you haven't checked out my free Facebook community. It's an incredible community full of like-minded people looking to scale their agency and level up in life. It's called Decline Closers. So the name pretty much tells you everything you need to know. We're already 3,000 incredible agency owners who are driven, passionate, um, and looking to get incredible results for their business, looking to uh, scale their agency past the 10K a month mark. So if you want to join that incredible community, click the link in the description, go ahead and apply. And if you're a good fit, we will let you in. And as always, hope everything's gone well in your journey, and I will see you in the next one. Peace.